Hello. Welcome again to our Sunday evening devotional. Hope you are prepared to search the scriptures with me. Hope you are prepared um, to seek after the Lord and see how he responds. Matter of fact, that's very appropriate, always, but especially for today, because today we're going to talk about prayer and how best to start a lesson on prayer than praying. So please join me as we begin. Dear Lord, my God, I just uh, pray now for your grace on us this moment, God, that we might understand some of the mystery of our connection with you, Lord. Not that we are somehow worthy of it, God, but you are holy and accepting that your love supersedes our mistakes. So, Lord, we thank you that through Christ we can have a real relationship with you, Lord, and we pray that you would help us to find more time to be with you. It's your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know if you're finding you have more time right now or less time right now. But there is an understanding in Scripture that Christians ought to pray. And it seems to me that if we have more time, it would be appropriate to use a lot of that or some of that in prayer. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of ideas of what prayer is supposed to be or, or not be in Scripture. Um, obviously, Christ talked about going to a quiet place. Well, you're stuck in your home. Maybe there's little kids. I have kids in, in my home. Maybe you're married. And maybe there's other people there with you. But it seems very appropriate right now that we find a place of quiet reflection to be with our God, to let our prayers be known to Him and Him alone, and then the God who sees what is done in secret will reward us openly for prayers made in faith. That's what I'm talking about today. And of course, what I'm always talking about is faithful prayer. The Word of God says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, some say, name it, claim it. And, and you know what? I'm, I don't think that's the right idea because we don't want to treat God like a pop machine. But our God does got this. These are not untrue statements, but they can seem too glib, too easy at times. I hope we understand the severe need for Christians to pray. I hope we understand that all our victories are won on our knees and all our defeats are lost on our knees. The Word of God says some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the Lord our God. That's Psalm 20 verse 7. So how does that trust reveal itself? For the Christian, when the rubber hits the road, when the road gets tough, then we see what we're made of. Who do you turn to? Where do you turn to when things are not so easy? Now more than ever, many of us are being tested. What is in our minds? What is in our hearts? What is coming forth from our hearts at this time? There's uncertainty, there's unknowing, there's confusion. It might be the perfect time to pray. Matter of fact, that sounds like the perfect time to pray. If you're dealing with uncertainty, it might be time to pray. If you're dealing with unknowing, it might be time to pray. If you're dealing with confusion, it might just be time to pray. Sometimes things are out of our grasp, but nothing is truly out of reach with God. And it will always be true. Take your concerns and take your needs to the Lord in prayer. And when we pray, the Lord hears us. But there is more to prayer than a simple request delivery type system. God's not UPS. God, as I said, is not some sort of vending machine. But there is something of a conundrum in Scripture concerning this idea. A puzzle that I hope to unravel with you at least a little bit. You know, Christ often tells us to pray, to pray, prayer, pray. And it says the prayer made in faith, asked in his name, believing you will receive, should give you what you ask for when you pray in accordance with his will. You notice there, there's a lot of caveats because there's lots of Bible verses about prayer. And people can key on certain Bible verses to say it's name it, claim it. When really prayer 
And God's response to it depends on our faithfulness and trust in Him. So you might be asking me, and reasonably so, why don't I always get what I want when I pray? Well, there's a number of reasons. The first is we don't know how to pray. Now, there's a key verse for that, but I'm going to talk of another thing, because James 4, 2 through 3, paints a pretty bleak picture of this reality. It says, You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have, because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you might spend what you get on your pleasures. First, let me say, prayer is not an exact science. I'm not saying it isn't important. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying the idea of praying wrong is a fanciful one. The only way to pray incorrectly is to not pray. Actually, even the holiest prayers pray kind of wrong. When you get the really pious people praying, they really stretch out those amens. You know, you've heard them before. Amen. Nice and long so you can feel it in your gut. <laughs> or they pray in such a way that you might sit back and ask, I wish I could pray like that. But both those ideas, while not sinful, not sinful by any means, are not the best representations of prayer in Scripture. Christ spoke of finding, as I said, a quiet place to pray, not praying or seeking public pronunciation. I think public prayer is a good thing. I think intercessory prayer for one another is a good thing. But we must check our motives much more when we're praying openly than when we're just praying with our God Think about how it would grow your faith if you know only God knew what you were going through and then you see the hand of God at work in your situation when things start moving in accordance to your faithful prayer. And what's interesting is amen isn't really the word anyway. I mean, that's the word we use and it's a correct word because it's in our vernacular. But if you look in the Greek, it's amen, amen. And I've never heard anyone go amen. So we get this pious idea that prayer is supposed to be more than our hearts crying out to God. And we worry we are the wrench messing up the process. But ever thinking you need to be perfect to interact with God is the first foolish mistake that every Christian seems to make. God doesn't want perfect. God has perfect. God wants you. He wants us obedient. He wants us listening. He wants us desiring and acting in accordance to his will. 1 John 5, 14-15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if, he, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. And Psalm 37, 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If I might paraphrase this in my own way, just to highlight something, I think, I think we can pull out from it reasonably. God does not want to withhold from us what is good, and he is good. What he really wants is for us to find our joys are truly wrapped up in his acceptance. And not spend so much time worrying about things we cannot change, but worrying more about him who can change the things. So why don't I get what I ask for? You know, I see this a lot, and uh, it's, I've always found it very sad. When someone, when someone dies, even some of the most close-knit families can get raving mad over possessions. Sometimes out of things like greed. Greed's not good. I think we agree on that. 
sometimes the motivations are more pure. They both want the thing that touches their hearts in, and, you know, in their passions and in the emotional hurt and the emotional toil of the moment. Uh, it's hard to come to a consensus. But we often think of God's blessings in the same way. But God is not stealing from Peter to give to Paul. Uh, and we're lucky he isn't, because who among us would claim we're Paul? No, God, or Peter, <laughs> no, God has his faithful, loving supply available to you, accessible through prayer and applicable for your life. It has your name on it. That means we need to remember why God answers our prayers the way he often does. Not my will, but thine. And we will find, I believe, that his will will be better than mine, even for me, but also for the world, and also for all of our needs. So how can our current circumstances, these circumstances, end well for us. Christians, we will be powerful when we realize God is trustworthy. And when we realize God is trustworthy, I believe the Christians will be on their knees. So do not doubt and believe. And you just might find He has always been listening. Join me in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, my God, we want to understand more. We want to see you more for who you are. We recognize, God, that you are faithful. We recognize, God, that you are good. And we want our lives, we want our actions to align with this reality that you are trustworthy and that you care about what we care about. So, Lord, I pray that holy men of God and holy women of our Heavenly Father would find time to lift up before you all the cares they find in this world, to trust you with it, and Lord, to look out faithfully for what you will do in the context of today. Thank you, Lord, for even challenges that let us see your hand mightily at work. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. Amen. I know coronavirus is, is nothing to take lightly, but our God is no lightweight. Have 